hello good morning friends in this video lecture we discuss the process of spermatogenesis and the structure of sperm spermatogenesis is nothing but the process of formation of spermatozoa in the seminiferous tubules of testis this is the cross section of testis where you can see compartment like structures and these compartment like structures are nothing but the seminiferous tubules if we look at the cross section of seminiferous tubules we can see many more cells in the different stages of the formation of sperm is there here <coughs> we focus on three cells the first is the spermatogonia second is the sertoli cells and third is the leydig cells spermatogonia and sertoli cells are there in the wall of the seminiferous tubules whereas the leydig cells are present in between the seminiferous tubules that's why leydig cells are also called interstitial cells leydig cells normally secretes testosterone in the presence of luteinizing hormone and this entire process of spermatogenesis in humans takes 65 to 75 days now we focus our study on how to spermatogonia develop spermatogonia normally derived from the primordial germ cells which is also called pgc and pgc develops in the early fetus from the extra embryonic mesoderm then it moves to the yolk sac after that it migrates to the gonads and after getting puberty the spermatogonia in the presence of hormone testosterone divide themselves to produce spermatozoa whereas sertoli cells it provides nourishment to the developing sperm sertoli cells also protects the developing sperm or spermatozoa from the individual's immune system by forming the blood testis barrier apart from that sertoli cell also functions as an endocrine gland and it secretes three biochemicals the first is the anti-mullerian hormone amh it inhibits mullerian duct in male during the embryonic development second is the hormone inhibin which secretes in response to the excess of spermatogenesis and it gives a negative feedback to the pituitary gland as well as the hypothalamus and it suppresses the release of fsh and consequently it decreases the spermatogenesis third hormone is the androgen binding protein which is called abp and this hormone particularly binds with the testosterone in the seminiferous tubules and increases the concentration of testosterone in the seminiferous tubules itself to add the spermatogenesis here is the diagrammatic representation of the spermatogonia as well as the sertoli cells so spermatogonia are present in between the sertoli cells and after getting hormonal stimulus <coughs> it divides and moves towards the lumen during this movement it crosses the tight junction and it increases in their size to form the primary spermatocytes then primary spermatocytes divide divides themselves to form the secondary spermatocytes then spermatids 
and consequently the sperm release into the lumen of the seminiferous tubules so this entire event can be understood by this figure very easily so we can divide the entire spermatogenesis process in three different steps first is the multiplication second is the growth and third is the maturation in the multiplication stage the spermatogonium they are actually stem cells they divide themselves to increase their number after increasing their number some of the spermatogonium they grow in size and will become primary spermatocytes then primary spermatocytes it divides through the meiosis so after first meiotic division it becomes secondary spermatocytes and then after second meiotic division it produces spermatids and in the spermatids differentiation takes place to finally form spermatozoa so during this division process the status of the chromosome as well as the chromatids in these cells have to be understood first so suppose the number of chromosome in the primary spermatocytes is 46 so during the first meiotic division the chromosome number becomes half because in the meiosis 1 the chromosome separates chromosome number becomes half but after the second meiotic division the chromatids become separate so the chromatids becomes half in the spermatids so from two chromatids it will become one and the number of chromosome from 46 now in the sperm it will become 23 so it will become now haploid now we discuss the second part of the topic is the structure of sperm so structure of sperm is broadly divided into head middle piece and tail this can be understood by having this figure the head middle piece and the tail head of the sperm is covered by acrosomal cap called anterior nuclear cap or gallia capatitis acrosome is a bag like structure filled with lytic enzymes called sperm lysine and sperm lysine is nothing but the combination of hyaluronidase and the acrosine in the anterior part of middle piece neck is present this very small structure is neck is present and in the neck region two centrioles are there one is called proximal centriole this one and another is called distal centriole proximal centriole it plays an important role in the first cleavage after the fertilization whereas the distal centriole it is responsible for the formation of axial filament and it acts as basal body axial filament it passes from the distal centriole through the middle piece to the tail and the axial filament when passes through the middle piece and tail at the junction of the middle piece and tail it crosses through a ring like structure which is called ring centriole in the middle piece the axial filaments are surrounded by spiral sheath of mitochondria which provides energy during the mobility of the sperm the head of the nucleus or head of the sperm is nothing but the nucleus 
in which the extremely condensed chromatin mostly DNA and the basic protein protamines are there. The axial filament which passes through the middle piece and the tail shows 9 plus 2 9 plus 2 structure 9 pair of doublets surrounding the central pair of a fibril. So these things are written in the consequent slides. This is about the proximal and distal centriole that we talked about in the previous slide and these are about the middle piece and the tail middle piece and the tail now one very important thing is that the very small or very thin layer of cytoplasm is found in the middle piece which is called manket and number of mitochondria in the middle piece is approximately 75 in number now we discuss the normal count of the sperm as well as the related abnormalities so normal count of the sperm is approximately 120 million per ml if it is less than 20 million per ml then person is supposed to be sterile 200 to 300 million sperms should be there in one ejaculation in a fertile male in which 60 to 70 percent of the sperm should have normal shape and size and 40 percent sperm should have the normal mortality. Abnormalities related to the sperm count can be named like this aspermia which is nothing but the absence of serum, agospermia which is absence of the sperm, hypospermia low semen volume, oligozoospermia is very low sperm count, asthenozoospermia is poor sperm mortality, teratozoospermia is nothing but the sperm carry more than one morphological defects necrozoospermia all sperms in ejaculation, ejaculation are dead and leukospermia a high level of white blood cells when present in the semen are called leukospermia so these are the different defects related with the sperm count now we try to discuss the hormonal control of the spermatogenesis as we have seen earlier the pituitary gland it releases FSH and LH LH acts on the interstitial cell or that we call Leydig cells also and Leydig cells are responsible for the production of testosterone and these testosterone then responsible for the development of male pattern then uh, the enlargement of the male sex organ then it increases the anabolism protein synthesis etc etc whereas FSH it acts on the cells which secretes or we said Sertoli cells there it secretes inhibin ABP and other hormones where inhibin it directly suppresses the activity of the anterior pituitary gland to slow down the secretion of the FSH and LH and consequently stop the process of spermatogenesis. Another way to regulate the spermatogenesis is the negative feedback of the testosterone. When the amount of testosterone increases, then it acts on to the anterior pituitary as well as on the hypothalamus to decrease the secretion of LH and FSH and that's how it regulates the process of spermatogenesis. I hope this video is clear to you. 
if you have doubt you can write me a mail so for this thank you thank you very much